I feel like there's a growing trend among people that are supposed to be very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, outspoken about anime. So if you haven't been keeping up, you should go ahead and watch It's a Gundam's video about Anita Sarkeesian and how she mismanaged all this money over the course of years. And it will lead into a lot more uh, antics, if you will. But this in particular today, this is going to be about someone that has labeled me something that I never thought I would get the title of ever. And it'll be interesting to see what you guys think about that. No doubt if you keep up with me on Twitter, which if you haven't, you should go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I mean, it's already there in the link, so I'm not going to sit here and spend all my time showing it. But if you haven't already, you can find me on Twitter. And I've made a post about this before. It was around this same time last year, just about. This is about someone by the name of Jacob Chapman. And you can probably tell from this screenshot from last year that they've since changed their at handle because, you know, it's called at it's a bone daddy. Or it's Bone Daddy, it's one of those, you know, it's really hard to keep up with. But this person, Jacob Chapman, had a panel at Crunchyroll Expo. And anybody that's familiar with Crunchyroll Expo would probably know that it's one of the many things that Crunchyroll does to get more money from you. So that way they can support the anime industry. But regardless, they had a panel about being LGBTQ in anime. And most of the people that went there were under the impression that... Maybe they would be able to find out more about anime with LGBTQ plus representation. Well, much to their dismay, that wasn't the case. In fact, it was about them patting each other on the backs for about 45 minutes, telling their own stories about how they were trans or gay in this medium where they would watch anime. But nothing really about anime itself, so most of the people that attended had to reach out and, you know, they asked the people for Crunchyroll... What exactly was going on here? And they got some very boilerplate responses. A user by the name Plaid Sheep says, Disappointed by this panel, really. 45 minutes in and everyone was still doing life stories and introductions. The panel was advertised to be about LGBTQ plus in anime. And there wasn't any discussion of representation in anime or LGBT characters or the state of LGBT rights in Japan. And of course, Miles from your favorite Crunchyroll streaming service says, Thank you for the feedback. The panel was advertised to be about what it means to be LGBTQ plus as an anime fan and the personal stories that go with that. I think the other topics you mentioned are super interesting as well. Maybe Crunchyroll will look into those as well in the future. So kind of a big yikes, especially when they were promoting something and then they changed it kind of at the last second. But that's also what prompted me to make an entire tweet thread. My tweet thread, which has all of the things intact that you can go see, it'll have the link in the description so you can check it out at your leisure, is pretty much the amalgamation of what I've just went over with you in this video. Except there's a little bit more, and we're getting ready to get right into that. I think it's been long enough in the video now that I can pretty much openly tell you about this and show you this picture. So after my initial tweet thread, or the only one really, I was promoted to the <laughs> to the ranks of an anime Nazi by Jacob Chapman because I had brought some sight onto a little thing that they were doing on the side. A project on Kickstarter called Lovely Little Thieves. And if you haven't heard of it, no one would blame you because it was funded and it was never spoke of again. Jacob Chapman started a Kickstarter campaign for a visual novel game called Lovely Little Thieves. And it had amassed over $23,000 out of the initial $20,000 that was needed. And that was brought to you by 745 backers. So 745 people pledged to this, even going as so far as to pledge $1,000 for one tier. One person did this. After my initial tweet thread that showed everything that was happening on the front lines, of this entire Lovely Little Thieves Kickstarter, people began to start wondering, what exactly are you talking about? I've never heard about this game. So if you were to look on Twitter, and I already did the search results for you, you can just kind of type in, it's Bone Daddy, and then you can also search Lovely Little Thieves, in which you'll get a whole bunch of these results, showing from the very beginning of its inception, all the way to now, as recent as just this past May. The tweets read as follows. 
I've gotten backlogged recently with the birthday slash Memorial Day weekend, but the four pack of reaction videos I promised for patrons will be up tomorrow, along with two thirds of this week's episode reviews. Thanks for your patience. Also, once those are done, I'll finally be able to resume work on YouTube videos, which I'm especially stoked about. And after that, lovely little thieves at last. So many projects I want to work on that life hasn't let me work on for uh, months. Years now. Rip. Now, if you're one of those backers that kickstarted this entire game, then you can go to the comments. I mean, you can look at them regardless. But a lot of people are just very disgruntled with the fact that they've not been given a proper product. Something that they have been working towards. And the last update that was made to this entire Kickstarter campaign was all the way back in September of 2018. The post reads, Hey guys, I'll keep this brief. I announced an update to go up on this day way in advance because it was going to be a major undertaking and for a couple of months I was making excellent progress towards it. Unfortunately, as of just over a week ago, I've been hit with a major personal crisis that I have very little support to weathering right now, which has forced me to devote all my time and energy to keeping my life in order and my reawakened PTSD response under control. I'm not trying to make excuses mentioning this, it's just the way things are right now. I did my absolute best, but there isn't anything I can do about it in regards to the Kickstarter. I kept working on the update for as long as I could, but I'm just not able to get there right now. I'm in a really difficult place and I'm afraid I can't discuss publicly. The best thing I can do is be transparent about what is in this update for when it is finally ready, which I am not yet setting a date to for reasons that I hope are clear given my situation. Full breakdown of what went wrong for this Kickstarter and the lessons I've learned from the expectations I could not fulfill. The game will still be completed, but I wanted to make a full acknowledgement of how and why things went wrong. The first 40% of the finished Lovely Little Thieves free to play for everyone. A second short visual novel, two to three hours, to be completed as a free gift to the backers at the $50 level and above. Its story is not directly connected to Lovely Little Thieves, but the genre slash tone is similar. These will all be present in the update as soon as I am out of the woods with this personal crisis and have my anxiety under control. Thank you as always for your patience and support. Before that update was posted, it was pretty much radio silent, but there was one post that was made after my thread, and it was by Nathan. Nathan wrote on June 30th of last year, Jacob, I think it's time for you to admit that you are not going to be able to update this game consistently. In the eight months, counting June, since you committed to an update on the first weekend of every month, you have only made three updates, one of which was late. This is of course after the previous eight month break where there were no official updates, Based on the comments you've made here and on Twitter, I know that you have had a lot of rough stuff going on in your life, so it makes perfect sense that working on this project or updating Kickstarter is often not high on your list of priorities, and I in no way blame you for that. That said, the state of limbo is increasingly frustrating as a backer. Every time one of your tweets pops up in my feed, I'm reminded of the uncertain state of this project. I'm not looking for the game to be finished anymore, all I want is closure. I know you said that you would tell us if you thought you wouldn't finish the project and I want to believe you, but the evidence to the contrary is significant. So what I suggest is that you officially put Lovely Little Thieves on an indefinite hiatus. If you manage to keep working on it and eventually ship it, that's great. If you aren't able to keep going, that's fine too. Kickstarter projects fall through all the time. That's just the risk we take when backing them. In either case, don't promise any more updates until it's done. So not only do we not have a completed product for Lovely Little Thieves that people put their money into on Kickstarter, but then we also have Jacob Chapman that just probably doesn't even care about this project anymore. And until we bring it to light, there's not much that we can do. Even Jacob Chapman probably doesn't care that much that $23,000 went magically missing, especially when they have a Patreon that they're actively making money on, which at the very lowest form, they could probably be making around $200 but at the very most, they could be making over $1,000. But that's neither here nor there, that's just where money kinda goes if you're paying money to someone that's supposed to have completed a project. And because I'm labeled an anime Nazi, this video is probably demonetized. So if you haven't already, make sure you check out my Patreon. And also, I have a coffee link, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere, I, I 
probably have to dig it back up again. But you can give me money that way. Instead of good old Jacob Chapman, who calls people that disagree with them a um, anime Nazi.